So very quickly, I want to go over uh, some of the details about RobotC as software. You can go to robotc.net and find lots and lots of information. This is kind of an open platform. Uh, it's primarily uh, designed to work with VEX components, VEX Cortex, VEX IQ. Uh, these are competition robots and the microcontroller that goes with them is the uh, one we have in our kits. But it can also be used on Arduino and it can be used on uh, other platforms like Lego. So it's actually open to more than one kind of computing platform. So once you know how to program Robot C, you have an opportunity to use it with more than one kind of controller. That's the main point of this slide. Uh, so where Robot C comes from, it, this, this is a slide that's given to you in the regular presentation. You can see it's somewhere between Java and C++. I prefer to look at it more like this. Um, there is a large family tree of different programming languages. And if you kind of follow the Fortran side, um, you can see that right here C is uh, invented. And then this became Perl, which is great for manipulating text, which becomes Python. And C also becomes C++, and then that kind of stems off and becomes Java. And C++ and Java are put together to uh, make C sharp. So really, we're talking about Robot C is somewhere in the middle between C++ and Java. Uh, so the cool thing is, once you kind of see the syntax and the structure of Robot C, uh, C++, Java, and C sharp will all feel kind of familiar. So as far as programming languages, you if you wanted to be a programmer, you know, skilled at coding, uh, you wouldn't have to learn all 2400 languages. If you learn one of the major languages really, really well, let's say like Java or C Sharp or C++, uh, that gives you a functional understanding of how programming works, how computers work. And then just moving to a different programming language, you just have to learn the syntax. It's like learning the nouns and verbs to make the programming language work. So if you really want to be a good coder, get in one and master it. And when you've mastered that, then you will have a good grip on programming in any kind of language. All right. We're going to be using uh, an an integrated development environment that is that well robot c is an integrated development environment and this is um, where the place where you have a suite of tools and templates that help you develop your code as quickly and efficiently as possible with with java and c plus plus all you really need is a text editor and you can type your code in and then you can compile it straight from the text editor uh, and make the software work but it's a lot more convenient when you have something like Microsoft Visual Studio where you can go through and have your templates and kind of navigate your projects where it highlights things and makes it where you can collapse portions of your code and you know, that sort of thing. It just makes it a lot more convenient to program quickly and efficiently with very few mistakes. Uh, a lot of these will also include like spot check, compile, and run, so you can check to see if different parts of your programming are working before you, you know, release your whole thing, the whole thing. Okay, so on Robot C, uh, a lot of this you'll see when you go through the features component in uh, MyPLTW, but it includes a start page that has like updates and news and that sort of thing. So it's, as of right now, everything is up to date on your computers. You should be good to go. There are some things you will need to uh, set, and I didn't like this slide, so I want you to pause the video anywhere you see a green border. You need to do this. You need to go choose Robot, and choose Platform Type, choose the VEX Robotics, and make sure you have VEX 2O Cortex selected. And also make sure Natural Language PLTW is selected. If you don't do these two checks every time you start, uh, robot C, your code may or may not work. So make sure these are configured properly every time. Uh, Windows 10 has a propensity for dropping settings like this after updates. So make sure this is always in the correct place. Uh, a lot of times if you're seeing like gross failures, uh, you may have it may have switched over to something different. 
maybe on VexIQ, maybe on Natural Language. It may not be on any kind of platform type. So make sure that is correct. Also in Robot C, if you choose File and Open Sample Program, there are uh, 75 programs that you can go get to look at examples of how problems could be solved. And also in here you'll see a PLTW folder. That is where the base template is for our programs are stored. So you need to be, able, be sure that you're starting with that template when you do your programming. And the presentation online shows uh, some stuff about comments. I want to talk about that a little more in detail. So if you're going to add a comment into your program, this is a way of adding a note to yourself. The computer totally ignores this. You put uh, two forward slashes, anything after that line, it's ignored. So when you're documenting your program, this is we're going to use this extensively uh, when we go in and start setting up uh, programs. I want everything described before you put any code in there. And this lets you think about how your program is going to work, and this is how you document it. Another thing you can do with this is at the end of a command like this is a while loop that's watching a sensor to be between a certain number of degrees. And if you want, you can go to the end of that line, add the two forward slashes, and then everything after that is ignored. So you can put on the same line a note about what this line of code does. This helps you troubleshoot a lot, especially if it's a program you haven't looked at in a while. You can open it up and go, oh, okay, that's what that's doing. Because sometimes it's not immediately evident what's happening when you um, open your code up. Another way you can do comments is with uh, a block comment. So you start it with a forward slash and an asterisk and close it with an asterisk and a forward slash. Anything in between these two symbols is going to be ignored. So this is where you could have like a paragraph describing how your program works and it will uh, block all of that out. It will be ignored by the compiler as code. So it just kind of says, oh, okay, that's for people. I don't care. But another thing you can do with this is for troubleshooting. If you have a block of code that you are not sure if it's working correctly or not, you can. it's called commenting out. You can put this symbol before the code starts and then after the code ends, and it will turn that whole section into It'll turn that whole section into comments and it won't see that as programming code anymore. So that is another useful way to use comments. Also in Robot C on the help menu, you have got uh, a help library that will have samples and explanations. A lot of times these tend to be really, um, really kind of in depth and very specific in some cases. So you can try to use the help. I suggest always going through the help to understand what a program can do. Uh, but sometimes if it's not, you're not finding it quickly, you can just Google your specific question and sometimes find the answer that way. On the left side of your programming window, you'll see text functions. Uh, you can just work in the programming window over here and just type your stuff in by hand. Uh, but it's sometimes more convenient, or it's usually more convenient to go over here and choose what you're trying to do and just drag and drop it where you need it. So um, this just is part of the integrated development environment that makes your job easier. All right, the menu level, you can play with this if you want, but I'm going to set, suggest that you set the menu level to basic for now. And what this does is it will reduce the menus to just the essentials of what you need. If you outgrow this or you want to, there's something you're looking for that you're not seeing, you can bump it up to expert or super user. I'll leave that up to you. My counsel is to start with basic until you outgrow it. So to do that, window, menu level, basic. All right, when you start a program, uh, and something I neglected to say yesterday, was that you need to start with the my P or the PLTW template from the sample programs and then save it as your program name. Uh, also, I will specify that you include a folder in your documents called Robot C Work and put all of your programs in there so they're easy to find. But once you're in a program, you'll get a button that says Motor and Sensor Setup. And I'll be giving you a list of things to do with that for the test bed so you can go in and manually enter uh, where the motors are, where the sensors are, and that sort of thing. Uh, you have to do this kind of configuration when you're doing your programming, 
because if you're if the brain doesn't know what it's connected to it can't respond to input or generate output properly and okay here's another thing we're going to change uh, these things can communicate through a wireless network we're not going to be using that so another change you need to make is go to robot and choose vex cortex communication mode and switch it to usb only the reason we're doing this is VexNet, if it's enabled, it will search for a Wi-Fi signal for 10 seconds before it does anything else. So if you don't have the Wi-Fi set up, it's going to delay your communication by 10 seconds every time you do something. So make sure we have USB only. We're going to just use the cable. All right, the purpose of this slide is to show that there are some uh, content-based color coding so as you go through the IDE, the, based on what it is, if it's text or comments or numbers or operators or keywords or variables or symbolic stuff or uh, assembly statements, that's going to be color coded. And I have a student or two that's colorblind. You can go in and configure these colors to make them things that are more convenient for you. Or you could just say, uh, let me just read what it is. But the color coding helps you uh, recognize errors. Like if you know it's supposed to be a keyword, but you misspelled it, it will be the wrong color. So that will help. All right, for further information, visit robotc.net or vexrobotics.com. That's all I have.